Hey guys, this is Dune Lord, my desert locked ultimate Iron Man. In the last video, we did probably the most intense thing I've ever done on this account. We soloed the Tombs of a Masket on expert mode. This not only was a huge accomplishment, but it unlocks something that will change everything for this account. By proving that I can do a solo expert raid, I've given myself the ability to start doing group raids as long as they're done in expert mode. This should drastically speed up the rate that we see purples in this series. And that's what we're going to be getting into for the first time in this video. And if you clicked on this video for the catchy title, that's not just clickbait. Stay tuned and you'll find out what it's all about. In between videos, I've just been AFKing some magic at the Mage Training Arena, so that's where our journey for today begins. We have word that there is a lucky impling around here somewhere, and I'm excited because I haven't seen one of these bad boys in a very long time. There it is. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh my god, dude, that is so freaking sick. Yo, it's like the Rune Kite Shield except upgraded. <laughs> oh, that is so sick, bro. And you know what else is cool about this shield? Initially, when I first got it, I was just like, oh, purple shield, awesome. But I realized that since it's an ancient kite shield, it's actually a god kite shield, which means it has a plus one prayer bonus, which is actually pretty freaking massive. Prayer bonus is super appreciated on this account. And what's funny is the untrimmed Eladinus's ward that I got in the last video, it also has a plus one prayer bonus. And that was probably the best use that I could get out of the ward. So this ancient kite shield with better defense bonuses and having the same prayer bonus literally makes that Eladinus's ward um, essentially useless because I would use the Tome of Water rather than the ward anyway. So yeah, to anyone who said it was a mistake to out the ward, we got something that is technically better. Yeah, I'm gonna do a bit more AFKing at the enchantment room, but then we're gonna get into some more raids. Don't you worry about that. And here is a big old magic level coming in, level 95. Yeah, that's enough magic training for now. I think we should go do a raid. All right, you guys, the time is finally here. We're gonna be doing the first ever group raid on Dune Lord. I'm excited, honestly. I think that this will, um, in general, be pretty good for the account. I think it'll speed up the uh, progress on the account. I don't know, hopefully we'll see some purples faster. We'll get some cooler drops. We'll tear through the KCs, and I just think it'll be better for the account to do some group raids. Yeah, the first raid is going to be with uh, the boys Archelon and Eastern Lands. If you have any experience with expert mode TOAs, because I will only be doing expert mode group raids, uh, feel free to join the Discord down below and uh, let me know, and then we can do some raids together. We're doing essentially the same invocations that I did for the solos, except I changed a few things. We're not doing more Overlords, because that one sucks. Instead, we have Ancient Haste turned on, because the DPS from more people should probably... Uh, make up for that and then we also turn lively larvae back on so yeah it should be pretty cool i think uh archie here is going to be butterflying akas we don't have to worry about him too much and i will be red xing baba because you know i want to at least say i did something in this raid you know nah but yeah we'll get into it now and uh yeah it should be fun man already this is so different because we're in a group raid we actually need to communicate things with each other so like for example i'm in voice chat right now he just said to vent because I didn't get the message telling me what I need to do. I just need to listen to them. It just adds a whole nother layer to this fight, which is actually kind of fun, but I'm not used to it on Dune Lord, especially. Oh, we dead? Oh my God, that was terrible. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Okay, well, we got the room done. That's all that matters. Lag spike, I might be dead. That was ridiculous, dude. <sighs> yeah, my whole game was frozen. Like, the clip will show that. All right. I think I still have a lot to learn about how to do Kefri in a group specifically, but that was fine. Easy. Oh my god, I'm dead. <sighs> That's annoying. I know he's got this, but this isn't how I wanted to spend my first expert Casey in a group. I don't know. There it is. 
never purple, dude. Never purple. Oh my god, I'm a leech, dude. There's a lot I need to improve. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> we persevered, and I carried. So, I deserve this purple I'm gonna get. There we go. Oh, we got some CAs. Better get moving for, I guess, an expert mode with melee only, I think. And that was it. I would love to see some rubies. Yes! Let's freaking go, dude. Now, in case you're wondering why I was so excited for that ruby drop, well, normally I like getting them because I can make more ruby bolts, but this time I wanted them so I can make myself an amulet of strength. If you recall from my solo normal mode raids, I used a dragon two-hand sword to last hit the core at Wardens so that I can get a four down instead of a five down. But I alked the D2H in the last video because the Amulet of Strength actually does the same thing, but it's a lot more consistent and it's easier to get back in case I need to get rid of it to clear an inventory space. So I made the amulet and then hunted for baby implings to get the ball of wool so I could string it, which actually took a long time. Give me a ball of wool, please. Cheese. Oh, geez. <laughs> That was so stupid. Okay, so I didn't expect this to be such a journey to get this ball of wool from Implings, but I've been hopping for like well over an hour now, and that's kind of ridiculous. So it's only a 1 in 10 chance to get a ball of wool from a baby Impling, but it's a 1 in 16 to get it from an Imp. So I'm just going to sit here and camp at this Imp that spawns right about here, and uh, this should probably be faster than world hopping. Plus, I guess Implings fly by here too. Third one, there it is. Now we can string this, and then I think enchant it just like that. And we got ourselves an amulet of strength. This is gonna be great on the core phase. So pretty much the system is gonna be, if I wanna do a solo raid, I'll be doing a normal mode raid. And if I wanna do a group raid, then it'll be an expert mode. And uh, we'll just see how many purples we can get. We got the amulet of strength, so the core phase should be nice. Yeah, let's just get into it. These are my updated invocations. We're going to be doing a 175, but I might bump that up to a 190. I'm just kind of getting back into the swing of solos. So we got softcore run on, which is nice coming back from doing the, you know, hardcore expert runs. We got these three for Kefri, pretty standard. We're not doing any Zebex, but if I want to bump up the raid level after I'm more used to doing a solo again, I'll just throw this one on. It'll bring us up to a 190. That should be fine. But for now, I'm just going to do a 175. Feeling special for Akka, we got everything but Boulder Dash for Baba because we will be Red Xing. I know that Red Xing isn't like mandatory in normal modes, but just because I know how to do it, I might as well do it. So, so yeah, we got all these on for Baba, and then we got all of these four on for Borden. So that's the invocations, and uh, yeah, let's try it out. It's been a while. I'm excited. There it is, 201 KC. First normal mode raid in quite a long time. We were kind of dry on these normal modes before, so let's see. Nah, nothing. There we go. Oh, hardcore raiders combat task. I think that's uh, doing an expert mode without dying, so shout out to Darb. No pet. Ooh. First purple I've seen in a long time for the Iron Man. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> this iron right here really needs a mask, so unfortunately. And also, I would like a mask. Now that I think about it, I'm a little upset too. Cache of runes. Soul runes, nice. This is going to be a really fun reason why I'm doing group raids in expert mode is like, we're just gonna see purples. <laughs> I'm just so not used to seeing the purple light. Even if it's not mine, it's still really cool to see. So I'm into it. There we go. Oh my 
my god. <laughs> it's a blue light. A blue light is a purple that is not mine. Let's see what we get. <laughs> oh, this game, man. This game really teases us. Let me get a pet real quick, please. Just kidding. Don't mind if I do steal this impling. Oh my god, dude. Armadil chaps. There's no way. There's actually no way, dude. That's such a good item. So in case you don't know, the god dehyde chaps, any of them, they have way better defensive bonuses than the regular black dragon hide chaps. So higher mage defense, higher range defense, and higher melee defenses. They also have a prayer bonus, a plus one prayer bonus, and I think, like I said when I got the ancient kite shield, I'll take any prayer bonus I can get on this account. The white ones look a little bit goofy, but you know what? It's fine. It's fine, because the stats are worth it. Took a bit of a break to kill some locust riders, because I need some more ammo, but here is level 79 smithing. And here we go, the last little bit of ammo. I pretty much just skipped the entire scabarite grind that I did. I essentially got a bunch of adamant arrows, a bunch of ruby bolts. There's a lot more in death storage right now at Tombs of a Mascot, but yeah, you've seen me kill scabrites and make ammo enough on this series. I think, uh, I think I'm just gonna skip to the end and get back into some raids now. There we go, 210 Casey. And we get a white light. Pretty standard for the first chest back. You know how it is. No pet, no nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. Oh my god, it actually worked. So they just added an update to where you can actually get XP lamps from pretty much most random events besides just the genie and the classroom random event. Since I already have the full Freaky Forester outfit, he now has a chance to give me XP lamps and I just got one. I'm kind of past lamping things on this account for the most part, but that is in general pretty big for snowflakes that we can have access to so many more XP lamps. I can only get close. <gasps> oh, it's on me. Oh shit. Oh my God, dude, this game sucks so much. Holy shit. Oh man. There we go. Oh, we got a combat task. Expert tomb looter for 25 KC, I think. Never purple. Well, this is cringe. I just started this raid, realized I only have three air runes and a couple hundred blood runes. So I gotta let myself die so I can go buy some more runes. 234 KC. <sighs> All right, this is a interesting looking chest, I guess. Eye of the Corrupter and an elite clue scroll. And I'm sure you guys know the drill by now. We just high out these extra gems because they are worth like 60,000 coins, I believe. We have no use for the red one, so it is gone. And I guess we'll just sell these extra gems to the gem trader. Dude, you gotta be fucking kidding me. There's 244 Casey. As you already know, we died to Akka. So who knows if we'll get a purple? Probably not. Surprise. Surprise. And there's thread number five or six or something. It's thread number eight, I was way off. Oh my God. The big 250 KC, a quarter of the way to a thousand KC. A white light, no pet, Ugh, just a fishy chest right there for 250. Oh God. If you think I'm eating the food, you're out of your damn mind. We got this. And there we go. I told you we got it. It was a little sketchy, but you know. This is the Dune Lord we're talking about. There we go, 31 KC. I actually survived this time. We have six people in the raid. Pretty good chance of seeing a purple at least. Oh, okay, okay. It's a blue light, so it's not mine. Well, let's see what it is. Ah, okay. Cringe. Shame it was a ring, but, you know, like I said, it's just cool to see purples or, I guess, blues, but you know what I mean. All right, we're sending another expert mode, KC. We got the duo dream team over here, me and Twitch streamer Jake C. So, let's hope the duos go well. There we go. 32 KC and a new expert mode PB. And we see... A blue light, of course. Of course we get a purple and it's not mine. Aw, oh, fang, okay. <laughs> and of course I get the thread, an equally good drop, right? 
All right, everybody. So as you can tell, my supplies are kind of dwindling. We're at under 100 arrows, and we're at like about 500 ruby bolts. So that means we only have like, I don't know, two, maybe three raids worth of supplies left. And then we're gonna have to go back to Locust Striders for a while, camp out supplies, and I'm probably gonna be doing that all throughout the league that's coming up, the new Trailblazer League. What we're gonna do is, because I haven't gotten a purple in so long, I feel like you guys deserve one. So I'm gonna do everything I can to get a purple before I have to go uh, back to Locust Riders. So in these next two raids, we are gonna be doing this new method that I found out about, which actually boosts my points by so much that my purple chance goes from about a one in 45 to like a one in 11 chance of me getting a purple. I'll get more into it when I actually get in there. It involves the Zebak crocodile room, but I'm gonna do that room last. So let me just go do the raid normally first. It's just the same exact 185 raid that I normally do. So yeah, let me go do the first three rooms and then I'll show you the method. Okay, now that we're here at the Path of Krondus, let me explain this point boosting method. First, in case you don't know, everything you do in the raid gives you points. And the higher the points at the end of the raid, the higher your chance of getting a purple is. And every raid level has a certain point threshold that you can achieve by the end of the raid. This method involves watering the tree in the middle of the Path of Krondus. Every time we do this, we get 100 points. And the broken part about it is that there's no limit in this room to how many points you can get, like there are in many boss fights. So I can water this tree at 100 points a pop until I hit the point limit for the entire raid, which gives me a huge boost in points. The way you do this is by making sure that all the crocodiles spawn and are able to eat the tree, which lowers its health. Every time you water it, it restores 50% health, so you can only water it when it's under 50% or else you'll end the room prematurely. So the whole thing's a bit of a balancing act between letting the crocodiles eat the tree, but also keeping it healthy enough to where it doesn't hit zero, otherwise they'll leave the tree and mess up their positioning. Now the worst thing about this method is that you have to water the tree over 200 times in order to hit the capacity. I did it 210 times for a level 175 raid. This whole process takes about one and a half hours if it's done right. Something that makes this method a little bit more chill is that every time you refill your water, you gain 25 run energy. This actually makes this method possible because if I was walking this whole time, I wouldn't be able to run through the traps and it would take twice as long. The last thing to note is that since the time of recording all these clips, this method has been somewhat patched. You can now only water the tree about 50 times before you stop gaining points. Still very much worth it for an account like mine, but I probably wouldn't recommend that normal players do it. But since these clips were recorded while this was still viable, enjoy my pain and suffering and hopefully the rewards that come with it. So exciting. Oh no, I finished it. Oh damn, okay, well. It was still pretty close, I guess. <laughs> 174 out of 210. Okay, so we ended up finishing a little bit early. We were supposed to get around 210 jugs filled, but I only got 174. Um, I just wasn't paying attention really hard and I ended up finishing the room early. But we're still fine because we still got an extra like 30,000 points and we normally get about 15,000 points total in the raid. So we're essentially getting like triple or even quadruple the total points that we would normally get in a raid in this one raid. Um, if you're looking at this, it doesn't track the extra points that we got in the crocodile room. That's why it only says like over 7,000, but we really have like probably close to 40,000 points now, which is pretty cool. So now all we have to do is finish the raid without dying and we have a pretty good chance of getting a purple. And there's Zebak dead. <laughs> All we gotta do is wardens now and uh, see what happens, I guess. I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> We're two and a half hours into this raid. We're sending the enrage phase and I just don't wanna die, you know? Cause if I die, then it means we got two and a half hours essentially down the drain. But this is the exact same wardens fight that I always do. So I'm not really doing anything different except for risking more. So I'm pretty confident with Warden for the most part, so this should be fine. This should be fine. Just don't psych myself out and we're all good. Easy, dude. 265. <sighs> all right, we essentially have like <laughs> over 50,000 points. I think we have like a 1 in, I don't know, probably like a 1 in 12, 1 in 15 chance of getting a purple here. So we'll see. We'll see. And it is. Oh, I'm so depressed, dude. I'm so freaking depressed. And as you can see in my loot, we actually got a coin drop, which is very cool that we got this because in a normal mode raid, the amount of coins that you get in the loot chest, if it's a single drop, 
is the exact amount of points that you earned in the raid, so we can actually see how many points we earned in this raid. We got 51,378 points, confirming that the boosting method does work, regardless of what my little box down here says. All right, we're back and we're ready to do another boosted raid. Uh, the difference this time is gonna be that I'm actually gonna turn the raid level up a bit. Since we're already committing to doing a super long raid, I feel like it makes sense to boost the raid level up because the reason I keep the raid level at a 185 normally is because I want to keep the core phase and wardens to a four down. But since we're already doing the longer raid, I think I'm okay with it being a five down. So I'm bringing in some prayer potions, which I normally don't do, but we're also gonna make the raid harder. So instead of a 185, we're gonna be doing a 215 by just pretty much turning on Zebak Blood Magic. But this is also gonna scale up every other boss, so it should be interesting. I hope I don't die. <laughs> and I accidentally <laughs> ended the croc room early again. I don't wanna talk about it. Only 53 deposits this time out of 210. Ooh. No f***ing way, dude. No way! Why would they put the bomb under my feet? I messed up the croc room, I died, but I guess it's still efficient. So, whatever, we'll finish the raid. Holy shit, dude, that was sketchy. <laughs> oh, we got it though, 266 KC. We did die, we did get an extra 10,000 points. So, I don't know what the actual points is gonna be for this raid, but it should be a pretty good chance. After all that, after I did everything, Perfectly? Question <laughs> mark. Nothing. Oh, thank God I got the elite clue. Oh, poof. Whatever. Um, let's do another one and not mess it up this time. Okay, here it is. 86 and a half minutes. <laughs> it's beautiful, but we did 222 of them. So we pretty much made like an extra 44 to 45,000 points on top of what we get in this raid. So yeah, um, I don't want to die. <laughs> I don't want to die. Uh, I'm feeling the purple, I really am. So let's go get this Zebak done and then get the Wardens done. Oh God, I feel more nervous right now than when I was going for the solo expert KC. <laughs> I have so much riding on this kill. I'm even using some bolts here to try and speed this up. One bolt proc would be great. Come on, I just need one more hit. Oh, that is the worst place I could have clicked. Anyway, 267 KC. Oh my God, dude. All right, so we got a level 215 raid. We got an extra 45,000 points on top of what we got here um, because of the croc boosting. And oh my God, there's literally never been a better chance of me getting a purple than there is right now. Come on, I'm manifesting it. I'm manifesting the purple light. I just don't know what to say. I was feeling it. <sighs> I mean, the main gets some seeds, I guess, but at what cost? No pet, no purple. All right, I might not have enough supplies for this. I have 39 arrows and 100 ruby bolts. I'm gonna have to be very sparing with my ammo. I might have to like melee Zebak. I've been um, bolting Zebak for these, but I don't know. We're gonna do one more, hopefully get a purple before we have to go to Locust Riders for a while. So yeah, this is gonna be our last chance for quite a bit. And here we go. We are done with croc boosting. It's official. <laughs> 82 minutes, we got 210. Actually, I was looking at the wrong number. We're slightly less than the max amount, but it's pretty much close enough, you know? There we go, 268 KC. This is gonna be my very last chance to get a purple because I'm going to Locust Riders for more supplies after this. I am out of ammo. So last chance to get a purple right here. All right, the slow walk up, surely the purple. Yes! Let's go, dude! Oh my god, we actually got one. We got one. Oh my god, I'm so happy. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. So happy that I got it right now, because I'm literally out of supplies. This was my last raid. <laughs> Let's show off the collection log real quick. So we are missing the shadow, the mask, and the chaps. I would love to get any of those. That is best case scenario. Let's open it. Come on, something new, something new. <laughs> I'm kind of in disbelief right now. I, I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> it's ward number two. It sure is. That is nothing to us except for a three million coin high elk. 
Whatever, whatever, it's fine, it's fine. We got a purple right before, right before the supply grind and it is good to see that the croc boosting is working, you know? Yeah, don't know what to say, man. <laughs> I'm just happy to have the dry streak broken. Our last purple was how many raids ago? It was literally like 90 something raids ago we got our last purple. It was our ward, so like two wards in a row, but um, I'm just happy to see the purples, you know? Just happy to see the purples. But like I said, that is our last raid for, I don't know how long, quite a while. I'm gonna show off the new tech. We have a new way to safe spot Locust Riders and we're just gonna grind out a ton of supplies uh, while I play the league that's coming up soon. So yeah, take one last look at the purple chest and we are gonna get out of here. And that's where we're gonna end it for today. If you made it this deep into the video, thank you very much and leave a like and a nice comment down below. Once again, I appreciate all of you for your patience on these videos, and there's more on the way. This series is not over until we have every purple, a pet, and the fang kit, even if the videos take a while to get out. Until next time, have a good one. Also, a massive shout out to all the channel members. In the Dune Legends tier, we have Ia, Musha, and Hybrid Chills. Huge thanks for the support from them. In the Dune Lords tier, we have Icarus, Jacob P, Humorbot, Josh Funderberg, Matthew Carroll, and Ian Willis. And in the Dune Lads tier, we have Cannon, Weirdo, Kai, Bash T, The Corf, and Lunar Forte. I appreciate all of you very much. And if you'd like to learn more about channel memberships, hit the join button down below next to the subscribe button. Thank you guys and see you next time.